Apology if the oven's making a racket in the background. It does tend to be a little noisy when it's heating up. Uh, but I want to talk about, in this episode, something that's sort of in the middle of a few things we've discussed before. I talk about improv a lot. You get home, just like, what's in the house? Just throwing stuff together. Some of my favorite meals. The opposite end of the spectrum from that is straight up recipe, right? You, you get, you subscribe to your magazines, you got your cookbooks. I have my favorites. I had a half a dozen magazines coming for years in my thirties into my forties and I devoured them. So you just read up the recipe. This is sort of a hybrid. This is in the middle. Lo and behold, last week I popped on the Roku brand new show, Emerald Cooks. Now I've been a fan of Emeril Lagasse since his first show, Had to Boil Water. The guy has never disappointed. He had the live show. So what I'm gonna do now, and I'm bringing this up because in the last show, Kim Chi, I mentioned how I get a whole bunch of different recipes and I conglomerate them together because the last thing I'm gonna do is come on this show and steal somebody else's stuff and put it out to you people. So this is a little something like that. I watched Emerald's first episode and he did a dish that blew me away, okay? So what I'm gonna do first is give full credit and you can go online and get the recipe or you can watch the show. It was episode one of Emerald Cooks on Roku on dewy crusted redfish with shoestring potatoes. Knock me out of my chair. I was like, I gotta do that. I'm also one of these people, when I see these shows on the Food Network or whatever, Within three days at the most, I'm making it. You know, I'm not one of these people that watches all these shows and then they're, you know, heating up a stove for his dinner. I got, oh, that looks amazing. I got to do that. And I saw Emerald do this dish and I absolutely had to do it, which brings me to the concept of this show. I'm not going to do that recipe exactly because I don't have all the stuff. But here's a whole nother concept. If you learn your techniques, you learn what you're doing, you can see something like that and go, I want to approximate that. I want to make something that seems like that. And that's what I'm doing. Something similar with what I have. Come on, let's do it. Come on, let's do it. I did my prep so as not to waste time. I'm trying to get these shows down. They've been creeping up to half hour shows. I want to get them down 12 to 14 minutes. Who knows if I'll ever do it. Zucchini, yellow squash, eggplant, extra virgin olive oil, salt, pepper. Simple, simple. I'm going to roast these for about 10 minutes. I also have some pecans. Mm, those were my dad's favorites. And I have preheated the oven to 450. I'm going to pop this in 10 minutes. You'll see them when they come out. I got this little saucepan on the stove, and what I'm going to add in there are a little bit of lemon, some Worcestershire sauce, and actually that number first in, first out, that was the old bottle, I got a brand new one, you want a good amount of Worcestershire, go to Emerald Lagasse's recipe, you'll get all the amounts, I'm just kind of weighing it, okay, and a little bit of bay leaf, this is going to be the Meniere sauce, that makes the dish amazing. Lemon, Worcestershire, and bay leaf. Let's let that come to a simmer. Now, here's what I was talking about, about improv in your own way, being inspired by the recipe. This is andouille encrusted redfish that Emerald does. I couldn't get andouille. I mean, I could have, but I wasn't going to buy the whole freaking pound. I got a little bit of Italian spicy sausage. I'm gonna take it out of the casing, put it in this saute pan, and we just wanna saute that off. Out of the skin, so it'll crumble up nicely. So let's start breaking that up. And on the front burn here is our lignette. Right? The lemons and the Worcestershire smells fantastic. A little bit of bay leaf, and I want to reduce that down a little bit. Mm. Oh, what a great aroma. 
uh, brown off. Remember, and Olagasi, of course, this would be andouille sausage. I'm using a hot Italian sausage. So you get the gist of the recipe, and then you do it to your taste, to your liking, or to what you have in the house. Okay, and while the sausage renders in the back there, this is reduced quite a bit. I've got some butter here, cold butter, that I've cut into little cubes, and bit by bit, I'm gonna whisk that in to make the manure. Couple cubes at a time. Got my nice rubber coated whisk here with a nonstick pot. So by doing it one little bit at a time, you get a nice emulsification going on with the sauce, right? Bring it all together. The Worcestershire with the lemon. Now this is going to be super hot. I don't want to burn myself, but I do want to give it a quality control taste. Mm. Oh, that's phenomenal. That is phenomenal. Lemon, Worcestershire, a little bit of bay leaf, and butter. So I'm going to turn this heat off now and let that sit. Well, I want to turn that heat off. Let that sit after I get another taste. Mmm. Oh, yeah. All right, back to the sausage. Starting to brown up. Getting cooked. Again. And now here's the other thing with something like this. I'm doing this on a whim just because I, I had to, man. As soon as I saw that show, I was like, I got to try that. And of course, it's not the actual recipe, which I will do in the future. So that's the whole point. Like, I'll get the andouille. Of course, I can't get that fresh right out of the water, Louisiana redfish, like Emerald had. But what I'm going to use tonight is a red snapper. I think it's a worthy filet. Nice looking piece of fish. So we'll get to that momentarily. Finish browning off the sausage, and I'll bring it over to the board and show you what we're doing with it over there. Come on, let's do it. Come on, let's do it. Okay, but in the meantime, our veggies are done. What was out? Huh? Cost four fifty. I overdid the pecans. This is part of the deal. I have more. So I'll roast those off. Actually, it's just the outside. I may bust those up and see what they look like. All right, those pecans are dark, but they are not ruined. I mashed them up in the mortar and pestle, and they taste just dandy. So what I'm gonna do now, put the heat back on. This is the pan that I browned off the uh, Italian sausage in, and I'm gonna add a little oil to it. I left the fond from the sausage. Remember our painting metaphor last week? So into this, I'm going to add the diced veggies. I did that off camera. Those were those eggplant, yellow squash, and zucchini. Some chopped garlic. And now, slightly well done pecans. But I'm not fretting for one second. They taste delicious. I'm going to saute that for just a couple of minutes. Mm. Eggplant, yellow squash, zucchini. Let's season that just a touch. And Emil talks about this in the show. Seasoning along the way. If you wait till the end, it's going to be very superficial. This is how you get depth of flavor swimming throughout your dish. Quality control. Mm. 
Oh yeah. Mmm. Yes. And it's picking up the fawn from the sausage that we sauteed in the same pan. So this is gorgeous. We're just going to take this off the heat now and let it sit. And we'll move forward. All right, my Italian sausage, a.k.a. andouille. If it was the andouille, it would have been much finer out of the casing. So what I did is I chopped this up a little. And now I'm going to add some breadcrumb. And I just happen to have some several day old bread on the counter that I baked last weekend. So I just whizzed it up in the processor. Nothing like fresh breadcrumbs. And we'll mix that in with the sausage. Okay, I think we've got all our components together now. Sausage and breadcrumbs, our vegetables. I'm gonna saute some shoestring potatoes. What am I saying, saute? I'm gonna deep fry these babies. All right, time for the fish. Come on, let's do it. Come on, let's do it. All right, here's how we're gonna finish up, folks. Got my cast iron on, warming up nicely. Extra virgin olive oil. Now let's take this red snapper, which in Emerald's world would be a gulf redfish. I'm going to season this with a little salt and pepper. And I'm going to go flesh side down into that olive oil. While it's in there, when you season the skin side, this red snapper has a beautiful soft skin. So no need to remove it. That'll be delicious and crisp up. We'll cook that for a few seconds, a minute, a couple of minutes. Our shoestring potatoes are getting nice and crispy in this deep fry. So I'll take those out momentarily. Set those aside, and we're going to assemble some. I'm pumped. All right, it's been about four minutes for that fish. Let's give it a flip. I have not turned the oven off. It's still on 450. We're going to finish in the oven. So now I have seasoned skin, if you recall. And now we're going to take a sausage mixture. The sausage and the breadcrumbs. On top of this fish. Now what we're going to do with this. We got that skin on the cast iron. Let's take this and pop it in the oven just five minutes. Still raging at 450, we'll finish that in five. Over to the board. Okay, folks, here we go, plate time. And I am not even doing this remotely the justice that it deserves. Go to the Roku channel, Emerald Cooks, and check out the real deal. I'm just playing around. This is the Meunier sauce. Of course it broke. <laughs> but I tell you what, the aroma is pretty amazing. So I'm not going to be too worried about it. It's mostly olive oil there. Lemons. Hey, I told you, we don't, uh, we don't sugarcoat anything on this show. We just do it and show you what we do. Some shoestring potatoes. Nice and crispy, fried. Mmm. That's no problem right there. That's perfection. And these are the end of my garden potatoes from last summer. Oh, man. 
Okay, let's go with the relish. Remember, zucchini, yellow squash, eggplant, pecans. I missed one thing, I added it after the fact, scallion. Now, on the show, Emil's got a slightly different plating than I'm doing. That's fine. And I'm saving a little bit of that relish for lunch tomorrow. All right. I think I'm ready to pull this fish from the oven. Here's our, in our case, red snapper. Andouille, not andouille, Italian sausage encrusted. Even though our crust fell off, red snapper. And that's the dish. The only thing we're going to finish it with is a little Parmigiano Reggiano. And I apologize to Emma Lagasse for this cheap imitation of a world class dish. But let's see what it tastes like. Red snapper, as opposed to redfish. Hmm. Oh. Oh. I overcooked the fish, but the flavor is unbelievable. Mmm. Mmm. It's not inedible, I'll tell you that. The relish. Mmm. And these crispy shoestring potatoes are unbelievable just on their own. So there we go. Yep. Fish slightly overcooked, but flavor for miles. You put a little of this sausage with the breadcrumb on it. Oh, actually, different spots. I got a tough piece. That was actually not bad. So there you go. If you're watching a TV show, a food show, like something you see, go for it. Oh. Full disclosure, I overdid the fish a little. But again, it's not inedible. It's perfectly fine. But the vegetables, the potatoes, the sausage crust, it's a meal and a half. Mm. If nothing else, learning from watching that show and doing this dish, learning that thing with the eggplant, zucchini, and yellow squash with the pecans, the scallion, I'll just take that away from this. And I'll do that barbecues on the side of some steaks off the grill. It's incredible. It's an incredible vegetable dish. So thank you, Emerald Lagasse. Emerald Cooks on Roku. Amazing. And we will see you for the next episode. Come on, let's do it. Friday morning, TGIFF. A nice fresh ground cup of joe. 7 a.m. Uh, I didn't sleep great because starting about 3 or 4 a.m., the winds got real high, maybe sooner, but that's when I it woke me up. Intense winds, and I have to say, after uh, July's tornado, I have a little bit of uh, agita when the winds get that intense. But I'm up now, nice cup of joe, and uh, gonna get my lunch ready for work. So let's take a look down at the board. All right, time to make lunch. So, as you notice, and as I discussed, we have full disclosure always on this show. The fish was slightly overcooked, but no less delicious. It was amazing. And it's not too bad. It just dried out a little. So, let's make some fish salad with the leftovers. I've got, uh, I already did some prep for you. It's 7 a.m. and I have to get to work today. But I had an onion, some celery right here, diced up. 
Let's get that in. Salt and pepper. A little pinch of salt. Cracker black. Now let's flavor up our fish. We got onion, celery, salt and pepper. Just a few drops, two drops of the Thai fish sauce. I don't want to, eh, maybe three. I don't want it, this stuff is powerful. I just want it singing in the background. Same with the rice vinegar. Just give it a little tang. Couple drops, rice vinegar. Let's put a little garlic powder. And I have a cut lemon here. So just a few drops of that. And then, oh, let me get some fresh parsley off the kitchen counter. A few little leaves of parsley. And let's tie this all together with the homemade mayonnaise, which is not the tightest one I've ever made. It's not broken. It's just kind of loose, see? It's not like a Hellman's out of the jar. But the flavor is mayonnaise extraordinaire. So that's going to just tie all these pieces of fish together. We'll go with a little more because, like I say, it is yummy. And test it out. I mean, fish salad at 7 in the morning, but with coffee, eh. Mm. Awesome. A couple more grains of salt. And this is my lunch today, Friday lunch at work. I take out a couple of, I keep these in the freezer at all times. Adam's whole wheat tortilla. So I'll retrieve two of those. I'll have two nice wraps at lunchtime. I have a tomato. I'll get some lettuce and bonus inside the wraps, the leftover vegetable medley. The eggplant, yellow squash, zucchini with scallion. Mmm, this stuff was so good. All right, I think I have a couple of nice wraps for lunch. Friday. Come on, let's do it. So there you go. Always try to use those leftovers for something fun, beneficial, functional, right? My lunch at work today. And uh, I'm heading into the weekend. Saturday is approaching.